All right, going to show you something very interesting and really not surprising from Stephen Anderson, the founder of the new IFB cult and his faithful word Baptist church cult in uh, Tempe, Arizona. The new IFB cult is the cult that I came out of. And he flat out denies that physical Israelites ever existed. Check this out. There's a lot of confusion today about the word Jew. A lot of people think that being Jewish is an ethnicity and that it has to do with the fact that you descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, if we were to ask Adolf Hitler, he would agree with that because he definitely believed that being Jewish was a racial thing. And uh, if we were to ask Zionist Christians today, they would tell you that, oh yeah, people uh, that are Jews, they're a certain ethnicity. It means that they descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and that makes them God's chosen people because they descend uh, from that bloodline. But let's see if the Bible defines being a Jew as being of a certain ethnicity. Listen to Esther 8, 17. And in every province and in every city whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Now, according to this scripture, many people at that time became Jews. Now, if being a Jew were an ethnicity, it would be impossible to become one because you can't change your ethnicity. So Anderson goes to uh, Esther chapter 8 verse 17 but totally rips the verse out of context and does not show you the full context of what the verse is saying. You see, just like any false prophet, he did not say, okay, turn your Bible to the book of Ezra chapter 8 down to verse 17 because I'll show you what it says in context and what's going on there, okay? Because this is what Anderson does to try to deny that the Israelites are a kindred of people because he's trying to, it, this ties into his whole replacement theology heresy that, oh, the church has replaced Israel and that he, you can actually become a Jew when you get saved. It, it's ridiculous nutty heresy from Roman Catholicism. Obviously, replacement theology is a Roman Catholic uh, lie, essentially. Sorry if you can hear my computer fan. I do apologize. It, it, it gets like this. I don't know why. It does this sometimes. I, I really don't know why. But let's look at the scripture in context of Ezra chapter 8 verse 17 and see why they were becoming Jews. You know, I'll, I'll show you why. Okay, turn your Bibles to the book of Ezra. Or sorry, not book of Ezra, Esther. I keep thinking Ezra, Ezra uh, Esther chapter 8 and I'll start at verse 1. On that day did King Assyrius give the house of Haman the Jews enemy unto Esther the queen, and Mordecai came before the queen, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, uh, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai, and Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spoke yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agite, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. And the king held out a golden scepter towards Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, If it please the king, I, I, if I found favor in his sight, and this a thing seemed right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, hope I'm saying his names right, the Agite, uh, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which were in all the king's provinces. Uh, for how can I endure to see evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Huh. Destruction of my kindred. What are Jews? They're a kindred. Interesting how Anderson didn't show you this verse. Destruction of my kindred. The word kindred means race. It's simply your Bible word for race. Hmm. You can see why Anderson didn't show you the context. Because, oh, you can, you can become a Jew. Really? So you can change, he even said, oh, you can't change your kindred. Exactly, you can't change your kindred. So you can't become a Jew in the sense that he's trying to set up this weird argument to make it work. Because um, he's, he's meaning as like religiously, like you religiously, you know, oh, you become a Jew because you, you change your religion and believe in God or whatever. Uh, that's, you know, that's what he comes off as essentially saying that God was only about the religion. He, he didn't care about the whole kindred because there was no Jewish kindred. Ridiculous. But destruction of my kindred. Interesting how he didn't show that verse. Uh, the king, As Asterius, said unto Esther, I hope, again, I'm hoping I'm saying these names, right? I'm just not good at saying these names. Said unto Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him 
they have hanged upon the gallows because he laid his hands upon the Jews. Keep that in mind. Uh, write also for the Jews, as it liketh you in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, for the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, no, no, sorry, may no man reverse. Uh, sorry. Then the king's scribes uh, called at that time in the third month, let me just go that bit down, the king's scribes called by that time in the third month, that is, the month uh, Sivan, and on the three twenty three and twentieth day thereof, and it written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews, and to the, unto the lieutenants, and, and the deputies and rulers of, of the provinces, which are, are from India unto Ethiopia, an hundred and twenty and seven provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. Hmm. So apparently a religious group have their own specific language that is, well, I understand there are religions like that, but languages are uh, very ethnic in nature. They're not, uh, I mean, like basically, I'll put it this way, you don't change your, your language, you, like, like your language doesn't just somehow change or get messed up when you change your religion, okay? You read in uh, Nehemiah chapter 13 how when the Jews were marrying, uh, interracially marrying, their children's languages are being messed up, their speech was being messed up. Why? Because uh, interracially marrying can change your language. But changing your religion does not change your language. It's not just a religious group. Jews, Israelites are a racial group. Anderson wouldn't show you that verse. You can see why he wouldn't show you the full context. He just rips this one verse out of context. And he wrote with the king uh, Asarius name and sealed it with the king's ring and sent it by the letters on horseback and the rulers on mules, camels, and young uh, dromedaries. And you don't have to read the whole verse, but he, he goes down essentially, you know, Esther saves the Jews from what was going to happen. But note, look at verse 13 for a minute. And a copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people, and that the Jews should be ready to ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemy. Interesting how he mentions that. Avenge themselves on their enemy. And look at verse 11 too. Esther 8.11 uh, wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the, the spoil of them, for, or of them for a prey. Interesting. Um, why were people becoming Jews? Anderson uh, wouldn't mention why they were becoming Jews. He doesn't explain why. Uh, he keeps this verse out of context. You know, they're, they weren't becoming Jews in the sense that, oh, they're, they're becoming Jews or whatever, because, again, you can't change your race like he mentioned earlier. But, of course, he denies they are a race. But then we read in, what was it? Verse number 6, Esther 8, 6, that they are kindred. So Anderson's argument falls all apart when you just read the context of the verse he's ripping out of context. It's uh, ridiculous. Okay, I mentioned this a bit earlier, but now you're going to see Anderson flat out denying that God's covenant with Israel was racially, was on racial grounds. He says, oh, it was, it was about preserving a religion. It was all about religious reasons. It's, it's uh, Anderson flat out denies plain scripture. Watch this. Because if Abraham's the father of Israel, if he's the father of the Jews, what was Abraham's nationality? What was he? Syrian. But let me ask you something. Were the Syrians in the Old Testament? What about all the other Syrians? Were they God's chosen people in the Old Testament, the Syrians? No. Why not? They had the same race, same ethnicity as Abraham, right? They're Syrian. Abraham's Syrian. They're Syrian. It wasn't ever about race. It was about the fact that they were worshiping the Lord. That's what made them a special people. It was the fact that they were circumcised and following the covenant of the Lord God. That's what made them special. It wasn't their race that made them special. It wasn't their ethnicity that made them special. That's why people in Esther 8, 17 could become Jews because it wasn't about ethnicity. That's why it was just about whether or not they worship the Lord. So when God says, don't marry these nations because they're going to get you to worship their gods, that's what he's trying to preserve, the religion. He's not trying to preserve the ethnicity. That's why nowhere in the New Testament will you find a commandment that says, hey, don't marry people that are of a different ethnicity. Oh, it was all just about religion. It was all about religious reasons. It was it had nothing to do with race. You can't back that up from scripture. Really. 
Let's see what the scriptures say about that then. Uh, turn to, if you have a King James Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 15, verses 3 to 5. If you have a King James Bible, obviously your modern Catholic versions will not do you very well. They uh, twist and pervert God's word. Now Genesis, chap Genesis chapter 15, verses 3 to 5. And Abraham, Abraham said, Behold, uh, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in mine house is mine heir. I do apologize, not good at reading on a computer. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This is not thine heir, but he shall come forth uh, of thine own bowels, and shall be, th sorry, shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now towards the heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. He sa then he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Notice that, seed, seed, seed. What's Abraham's seed? Well, you see in John eight, how the, John chapter eight, how the Jews are arguing about them being Abraham's physical seed. There was a physical seed of Abraham. What was it? The Jews. Exactly. And of course, you know, Anderson will say, "Well, what about John eight forty four? Jesus condemns them." Yeah, he's condemning the Jewish Pharisees. And I'll come out and say it. You know, the religion that Orthodox Jews practice today is not the religion of the Old Testament, the, the biblical Israelite religion. You see, the, the Orthodox Judaism of today is simply Babylonian religion mixed in with, with some Torah practices. Okay, I, I used to make the mistake of thinking that well, Orthodox Jews, they practice the Old Testament Israelite religion. I've, I now have changed my stance on that because when doing further research, a lot of their, their uh, authority, scriptural authority, is, is based on the wicked Babylonian Talmud, the wicked, disgusting, blasphemous Babylonian Talmud. So, and, and a lot of the practices of Orthodox Judaism, for example, bowing down to that wailing wall, which is a blatant, complete violation of Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1. Uh, a lot of those practices, the whole, you know, the whole, uh, was it the, the, I mean, they had the veneration of the Old Testament prophets, or they have, you know, the, the certain rabbinical traditions that have zero basis in the Torah, but they're getting it from the Talmud. So, I do... Uh, repent of ever saying that uh, Orthodox Judaism is just simply the Old Testament Old Testament Israelite, Israelite religion. It's not. It's actually a mixture of Babylonian heathen religion with biblical uh, the biblical Israelite religion because it was it basically was started in the Babylonian captivity when they learned some of the practices. So uh, Orthodox Judaism is not the Old Testament religion. It's, uh, st it's it's just simply like like how Roman Catholicism is not Christianity. It's just simply a, a, a Greco-Roman heathen religion mixed in with biblical Christian practices, which they, they'll call Christian. And uh, Orthodox Judaism is simply uh, Babylonian heathenism mixed in with Old Testament Israelite religion. So I just wanted to point that out. But you see a seed, the physical seed of Abraham. That's what's going on there. And he's arguing with the Pharisees about that in John 8, because the Pharisees were thinking of the physical seed of Abraham, but then you have the whole you know, dispensational thing of Jesus Christ bringing in grace and truth, like in John 1, 17, like that says. But I'm going to show you one more scripture on this thing of, of oh, the Jews, they're not, they're not a religion. They're just, they're, or, sorry, they're not a race. They're just a religion. Really, let's see about that. Uh, Genesis chapter 17, verses 7 to 9. And I will establish my covenant between thee and thy seed, and after, after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee, and I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the, the land wherein thou, thou art a stranger, to thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, uh, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Boom. Replacement theology just destroyed right there. Everlasting covenant with, with uh, Abraham's physical seed. It, it, everlasting does not mean oh just temporary till the, the church replaces it no everlasting covenant and everlasting possession of the land land of Canaan it's the defined the land are given is defined in Genesis 15 verses 18 to 21 it's everlasting it's not just temporary so replacement theology is just destroyed it's an everlasting covenant but Anderson doesn't want you to believe that he wants to think it was all just about religion it was not actually about physical seed because he wants, to, he wants to basically teach the Catholic heresy that, oh, the church has replaced Israel. The church hasn't replaced Israel. That's a Roman Catholic doctrine. It's a heresy. It's from the Jesuits. It's from Satan, obviously, because Jesuits are children of Satan. 
So don't be deceived by the lies of Stephen Anderson and his twisting of scripture and ripping scripture out of context like he did with Esther 8.17. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.